For those of us in the pregnancy and infant loss community, you know all too well what it's like to have a missing seat at the table. The holidays only, well, they can only make that even more intense and challenging to face. With Thanksgiving coming this Thursday, Tony and I wanted to give you four tips to help you not only face this Thanksgiving holiday, but get through it. So let's get started. All right, so I want to highlight an article from Still Standing Magazine. And this one is written by um, mom Marissa Michaud. I'm sorry if I did not pronounce that correctly. Um, Marissa wrote this back in November of 2018. And she is mom to Drake, who died in 2010. And she writes this article titled, Trying to be Thankful. And it's about grief and thankfulness and how they are two different opposite concepts. Um, but like, can you grieve and be thankful at the same time? Can they coexist together? And so it's a really interesting article. I'm just going to read a couple um, lines from it, but I encourage you to check it out. Um, she writes, as grieving parents or as a grieving parent, the word thankful has us cringing because being thankful conflicts with our grief. Mm. Um, I've learned how conflicting being a grieving parent can be constantly in doubt of my own thoughts and feelings. For instance, I'll just give a couple examples. She writes, I feel happy, but should I feel sad? I feel sad, but should I feel happy? Hmm. I am watching TV, but should I be thinking about him in reference to her son? Am I thinking about him, but is it okay? I am thinking about him, but is it okay to watch TV? So she writes about a lot of those conflicting thoughts that we often go through and with Thanksgiving coming around and the thought is obviously we are to be thankful, but can you be thankful when you've lost your baby? Um, she writes a little bit further down in the, in the article, as grieving parents, our minds are constantly overthinking, which is true for myself, overanalyzing every thought, every action we do. We fear feeling as if we no longer care, we no longer love, no longer miss our child. But is that really true? Um, the thought is, is that, or her thoughts mean, is, is that thankfulness does not necessarily mean giving up on grieving or that you're forgetting about your child. Um, thankfulness can mean looking at grief in a different perspective. She gets, she writes, being thankful for something does not mean we are giving up on grieving. It means we are looking at our grief in a different way, if only for a moment. Mm -hmm. So it's a really interesting article. I think she um, really hit on the nail Head. <laughs> the nail on the head. <laughs> the nail on the head about um, about those conflicting emotions, and actually, I thought she put to words a lot of feelings that I actually had felt before. And so, just the conflict of can you grieve and also be thankful at the same time? Um, being thankful can also be being thankful um, for what your baby brought to your right. life, mm -hmm. um, not necessarily that your baby is no longer with you, um, mm -hmm. but maybe you're the life of your baby brought um, some new supportive people to your life, right. or maybe um, your baby made you a mom for the first time. So there's mm -hmm. lots of things that we can look at differently um, and, and, and be thankful for. So um, it's a really interesting article. We really encourage you to take a look at it. Um, it's at stillstandingmeg.com, and we'll put the link in the description below. So when you get a chance, we encourage you to check it out. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're just joining us, uh, my name's Jeff, and this is Tony. We are Our Little Sparrows. And if you'd like to find out more about us and our organization, just go down in the description below this video um, in YouTube, and you will see the link uh, to all our social media as well as our website, and you can find out more about us. Um, but also, if you're getting value out of this, please give us a thumbs up on this video if you're liking it so far, this mm -hmm. episode. Um, and feel free to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get alerts. Tony and I do release uh, new podcast, video podcast episodes every week. Um, and you have comments, you have questions. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Um, we answer all the questions um, that we can possibly get to uh, and also uh, join in conversation in the comments um, of these episodes as well. So feel free to do that. Right. Awesome. So with Thanksgiving coming uh, this Thursday, I know that uh, that kind of throws us for a loop sometimes mm -hmm. um, for those of us in the pregnancy and infant loss uh, community because it just feels like, oh, my gosh, the holidays all of a sudden came so quick. It's like mm -hmm. and it's been seven years for Tony and I mm -hmm. um, since our firstborn Olivia. Um, and it just seems like the holidays, I mean, 
Halloween is the first, you know, children's holiday mm -hmm. um, that really hits. And it just like, man, that came fast. But, you know, this year is unique um, with COVID-19. Uh, it just really makes 2020 um, and the holiday season, I think, more intense for us uh, in our community. Um, I mean, specifically, we wanted to just mention a few things that we might be challenged with. Um, those of us who have had uh, experience loss um, for years and those of us who are just experiencing it um, recently. Mm -hmm. So we know that for our community, there's a lot of mixed emotions that we're dealing with about the holidays in general. Uh, with COVID-19, it gives the challenge um, that, 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 other, that added layer mm -hmm. where we're challenged uh, with the separation from our families, uh, mm -hmm. possibly. I know in some cases, um, we're specifically facing the inability to travel mm -hmm. you know different parts of the country are in different places different governors are do, doing different things you guys know um what we're talking about if you're living in different parts of the country we're in california mm -hmm. so gavin newsom whatever he says goes and that's what we have to follow so to speak so um so to speak <laughs> <laughs> so um some of us are unable to travel others are forced to be um social distancing mm -hmm. maybe we're at high risk maybe we're currently pregnant Right. With that, um, with our high risk pregnancy or we're pregnant with our, our rainbow baby and everything's going fine. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so some of us are at high risk for health reasons. Uh, comorbidities, I guess, is the the big words that go around. Um, and in some cases, it's for our own self. Right. Where we're, wherever we're at physically, um, whether it's our health, whether it's our just where we're at uh, mentally, emotionally, mm -hmm. Um, that's another thing that's really keeping us from traveling mm -hmm. um, and keeping us separated from our families. Yeah. So it's a mixed bag, right? Mm -hmm. Really, there's no one there's no one thing that's happening only with everyone in the world, right? right? Yeah. Um, the other thing might be obligations. Um, you know, reasons for not wanting to go, basically, mm -hmm. those who want to be more isolated. So when you got family saying no, don't come. Mm -hmm. That can be very isolating, um, and you feel obligated uh, in some ways to, in order to help the community stay healthy, you feel obligated to stay home. I know right. that could be another uh, another sense of obligation. What do you think? Yeah, that's one take on it. I think also another take would be maybe you feel obligated to attend a family gathering that you've been invited to, but maybe you have some reservations about going right. because there may not be as many uh, precautions taking place. They may not be wearing masks or encouraging kind of social distancing. Or you don't know what is going to happen when you get there. Yeah, or you just don't know who else might be there. Yeah. So there might be some reservations that you have um, in terms of going, but yet it's a family gathering. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we feel pressure to still attend, even if we might have um, maybe for ourselves, we would choose not to attend. Right. So there's those kind of challenges as well. Right. So I know that's kind of happening with us. And mm -hmm. it's really, it kind of, you know, you procrastinate telling them because you, you don't want to hurt their feelings. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day, you got to tell them, hey, you know what? It's just, just not a good. It's just not a good yeah. thing, and so we're not comfortable. Yeah, you just gotta be honest. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it goes without saying, but we're you know we're gonna address it. There's a heightened sense of emotion mm -hmm. um, and awareness, and mm -hmm. sometimes those you know intersect with each other and 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 bleed into each other. You know, it's an emotional awareness um, that can happen. So specifically, we're thinking about the things that cause us more harm. Mm -hmm. So we're really you know it, it stirs up emotion in us that it, almost a fear mm -hmm. of mm -hmm harm being caused to us mm -hmm. by someone who didn't even know they're sick maybe <clears throat> or vice versa we didn't know that we were sick and we ended up harming someone else right so that it, you know it can go both ways and then this awareness um uh maybe even more of a heartbreak you know type thing mm -hmm. where um the gathering uh can get others sick you know to the point that they right. do die and I think it's just also just being aware that there could be a potential for more heart ache like if someone you cared about or you yourself ended up getting sick mm -hmm. and um, maybe it was a difficult recovery. So then there's a potential for more heartache. And I think as lost parents, we um, not I wouldn't speak for everyone, but I know for myself and some others that as lost parents, we are already trying to be so protective mm -hmm. of um, guarding our hearts from more trauma. And so if we can avoid further trauma, then we will take those precautions. We will take those steps to, to try to prevent anything from happening. Right. Obviously, we can't prevent everything 
traumatic happening or mm-hmm. some, anything negative. But, you know, from what we can control, we will take those steps. So sometimes I think that's um, just kind of what the heightened awareness mm-hmm. is of what is the situation with COVID? How is it affecting or how is it transmitting um, to other people? And just w- not wanting to create further mm-hmm distress or trauma in our lives right yeah Mm -hmm. and i mean what goes with that too is is you know if you're you know the pregnancy loss and visibility Mm -hmm. you know and i don't know if i don't know if everyone knows that terminology but Mm -hmm. it it, it's it's essentially the feeling that um i mean especially if if you had an early loss that there's just a lack of people knowing Mm -hmm. um and even assuming that things are fine so they're not even asking yeah like a lack of acknowledgement right from people with no matter like if it's early loss maybe people didn't know right um maybe they may not have known at all if you had a, a loss mm-hmm. that was later in the pregnancy and it was more visible um maybe people just are afraid to say something or they assume that you're okay and don't acknowledge at all the loss mm-hmm. of your baby and so sometimes that challenge is like feeling the feeling of invisibility like your struggles aren't being acknowledged, um, especially during Thanksgiving, which can be, uh, or holidays, which can be a, a really mm-hmm. hard time. So um, we just want to acknowledge or just kind of pause and just what does this all kind of mean? So when our baby dies, um, it changes our perspective, how we view things, how we um, interpret things. It's like we have a new lens that we are viewing life through. And sometimes that can be a challenge to adjust to. Sometimes it's hard to accept that we have this new perspective in our lives because our baby died. Um, Other times it's really eye-opening that it um, actually kind of prioritizes certain things, um, what's important and what isn't. Um, So with this new lens, we are kind of seeing things through obviously a different perspective. It Mm -hmm. changes, it can change a person. So with the holidays coming up and Thanksgiving giving coming up this week, um, there are three potential thoughts that one could have after experiencing pregnancy loss. So the first one would be, we just experienced the death of our baby. Mm-hmm. We want to stay home, even if there mm-hmm. wasn't COVID-19 to worry about. So regardless of the pandemic, the Thanksgiving holiday would be something that you just want to stay home, just kind of isolate yourself. And that's one potential thought or scenario. Mm-hmm. We kind of did that a lot the first year. Oh, yeah. The second thought would be we have just experienced the death of our baby and we don't want to experience the loss of another loved one. We are taking extra precautions to protect ourselves and others by staying home. And we kind of touched mm-hmm. on that a little bit. And I just kind of Um, I found this quote on um, social media the other day, and I thought this really spoke to this point. And it's um, by John Polo, and I'm not too familiar with who he is other than... um, I I think it's Polo. Polo. Did I say that? You said Polo. Oh, sorry. Polo. John Polo. I heard Polo, but... mm. Okay. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) But he um, writes this. People have no idea how protective of my peace I truly am. After everything I've been through... The moment something or someone begins to intrude with the inner harmony I've worked so hard to find, I take a huge step back. Mm -hmm. My peace is non-negotiable. That's really good. And I totally resonated with what he was saying because I've worked so hard on trying to find peace in in the midst of this crazy storm, Um, not just only with the loss of our baby, but also dealing with the fears and uncertainties that COVID-19 have brought and all of the other events that have happened in this year. And it's hard. It's so easy for me to get to um, a level, a high level of anxiety, and then Mm -hmm. to work myself down from that Mm -hmm. to where I actually can feel peace for a bit. And then all of a sudden, it just quickly, as soon as something happens in the news or we hear of something else um, happening in our state with COVID-19, mm. that level of anxiety and fear just rises right back up. And it's like, I have to start all over again. So um, I totally can resonate with that. And so that concept of um, trying to protect your peace um, is totally applicable for our number two yeah. of trying to take pre- precautions to protect yourself and others to prevent other types of trauma coming into your life. We could so, put in the link to that Facebook. Yeah, or, or, even, or we'll just put. I could try. I could probably find it. 
Yeah, I'm not sure if it'll yeah, be a website. link, but we'll um, put it somehow on the link in the below. Description, yeah. So um, now to our third point or potential thought. The third was we have just experienced the death of our baby and want to take advantage of the time with our family as we know life is short. Mm -hmm. We will take our chances and be safe as possible. So those are three potential thoughts and that you could be thinking right now going into Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. um, what are your options? You know, so mm -hmm. I mean, those are three different scenarios. So yeah. we'll no, I like that. That was really good. I mean, I totally understand uh, the lens. Um, also, I mean, I've heard it in different, uh, put different ways. Like it changes your perspective or you have uh, a changed um, reality mm -hmm. uh, on life. Yeah. And we're not saying that's easy and no, we're not saying it's no. a flip of a switch. Uh, right. It can definitely be challenging uh, to accept mm -hmm. that things have changed, right? Yeah. And what that looks like for you and your family. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So stick around. We're going to get to those four tips uh, to help navigate Thanksgiving coming right up after this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this week for our spotlight, we want to highlight a children's book because we are still in the month of November, right. which is um, Bereaved Siblings Month Awareness Month. Did I say that right? Bereaved <laughs> Siblings <laughs> Awareness, Awareness Month. month yes. And also we just... Um, past Children's yeah, Grief 19th, Awareness yeah. Day, which is November 19th. Yeah. So we wanted to highlight a children's book. This is called The Invisible String by Patrice Karst. And we'll put the link in for this in the description below mm -hmm. as well. But we think this is such a great um, illustration or illustrated book for children. And it illustrates how we still have a connection with those we love. Um, it explains it deals with um, all kinds of separation anxiety, loss, and grief, and it explores honest emotions and questions that children have. Um, and um, it's a great resource for parents, for teachers, um, therapists, social workers, anybody who works or is involved with children, this would be a great resource to have. Now, this is the older version there, they did update the cover, so it will be a different right. um, illustrated picture on the front. But mm -hmm. it is The Invisible String by Patrice Karst. Mm -hmm. So check it out when you get a chance. Yeah, and I did find that updated uh, graphic, so that'll be okay. That'll be there. Great. All cool. right. So now for the four tips to help navigating through Thanksgiving. So first of all, each family needs to decide what is best for them. And let's respect each other's decisions. Every family is going to be different. Mm -hmm. And it might your decision might be completely different from the rest of your family. And, and be okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, if you are hosting a large group of people, I would just say invite. Of course, you don't want to leave anybody out. So you invite your family or everyone that you want um, but I would just say check in with your guest list and don't assume that everyone is going to be okay with being mm -hmm. at a large gathering and having relaxed restrictions if you choose not to do that. Um, just see how they're feeling and just let them know that if they're not comfortable being there that it's okay to opt out or let them know what precautions they can take or, or like if it's okay to wear a mask or maybe have some outdoor seating that's available if it's you're in a um, region that is is okay for that um mm -hmm. but just let them know that it's okay if if they're not comfortable i think that's important that we need to communicate that to people um when we're either hosting um or we're being invited to a gathering that um to let people know that it's okay if if you're not comfortable going. Right. Um, tip number two, take time to honor and remember your baby. Yeah. Yeah, and that could be in various ways, lighting a candle or writing a letter to your baby mm -hmm. or just taking a pause, going to visit a park or if you have a grave site, mm -hmm. take time to go and honor and remember your baby. Yeah. Number three, recognize your limits mm -hmm. and also be open to trying something new or different. Um, and last but not least, it's okay, number four, it's okay to feel sad sometimes, and it's okay to smile and laugh, mm -hmm. and it's okay to grieve and be thankful. Yeah. I think they can coexist. I think it is possible to find thankfulness in a time of grief. Yeah, definitely. And that goes back to the, you know, to the article from mm -hmm. Still Standing Mag uh, with Marissa 
Machad. 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 I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that's. I mean, that's what I really liked about her articles. Mm-hmm. Um, she at the beginning she shared about the wrestling between the you know, am I honoring my baby if I'm doing this, or do I need to go specifically do something to honor my baby? Mm-hmm. To getting to you know, it is a it is possible to grieve and to be thankful at the same time. Right. That's it was a great article, mm-hmm. great reminder. Well, if you guys are getting value out of this episode, give us a thumbs up like we said before. Subscribe to the channel and uh, ring the bell so you get alerts. Uh, every week you'll get an update uh, letting you know that we've released a new podcast, uh, video podcast episode. Um, and in doing this, this uh, promotes and um, allows us to further reach other people in our community on YouTube. We are a very unique channel, um, which uh, brings its own challenges uh, to get YouTube to understand who we are and to share it um, with others who are searching out um, different aspects of the pregnancy and infant loss uh, journey, right? And comments, questions, we are looking for them. Uh, we would love to uh, uh, to exchange and comment uh, to your comments, as well as answer your questions, uh, as we do answer as many questions as we can. And also wanted to let you guys know that um, we do have a Patreon account. Uh, Tony and I are self-funding um, this journey in the Our Little Sparrows on YouTube. Uh, and if you guys want to um, help um, fund the cause, mm-hmm. um, please go to our Patreon account. It's uh, patreon.com backslash Our Little Sparrows. Okay. So no matter how you look at it, the holidays are going to look different this year for many reasons for a lot of people. This has been a really hard year. So let's be kind to each other. Let's be understanding. Now, by no means are we recommending that you go against your local state orders or anything like that, but we just know that people are still going to try and get together regardless. So keep communication open with your family and friends. Um, Don't assume that you're going to know what each other's thinking and assume that people are going to be okay with it. Mm -hmm. If you're not okay with something, we need to be proactive and let them know if we're not comfortable going to a gathering or so forth. Um, But yeah, I think it's just going to be a hard year all around, but there can be good things. There will be good things that come out of, um, out of this year. Mm -hmm. And so we need to look for the, the things that, Uh, we can be thankful for and and just look for that different perspective and that can also lead to more healing in our lives too right Mm -hmm. and just a small announcement uh tony and i are are going to be taking off uh the next week for the Mm -hmm. thanksgiving holiday so um we won't be back until the first week of december uh with our next video podcast episode Mm -hmm. and remember you are not alone Mm -hmm. you are loved and your baby will always be cherished We'll be here to support you in any way we can. And if you got value out of this uh, podcast, video podcast episode, and want to see another uh, video podcast episode, you can click or tap on the image above. And if you'd like to go deeper, uh, Tony and I have uh, produced a 25 episode um, grief series called The Pregnancy Journey, Grieving from Diagnosis to the Loss of Your Baby and Beyond. You can click or tap on that image below. But thank you for joining us and have a gentle Thanksgiving.